Willa Vinak, uh, good afternoon everyone. So I um, recently sat down and um, had a carver session with one of my cousins. And after a few heavy rounds, we started talking about Fiji. And I told him how proud I felt that Fiji was my homeland. So he immediately jumped up out of his seat, looked at me, sort of dead straight in the eye, and he went, bro, you are just a coconut. I was surprised. I was like, what do you mean, coconut? Like, hard on the outside, soft inside? Nay, nay, bro. You are just brown on the outside, but white inside. And I was like, hmm, okay, interesting. His comments, as you know, I found them hilarious at that time, but that did sting. It made me realize that there are people in Fiji who think that I am now no longer one of them. It made me question, now that I live in Australia, do I have a right to call Fiji home? And what exactly is home? What is the concept of home? Is it a place, is it just a physical place? Or is it just all beyond that? Is it about feelings, about people, connections that you hold to your land, to your vanua? I was born and raised in Fiji. I come from that soccer crazy town in the middle of Rotoka and Tavua. I've always considered myself a proud son of Ba. If you're born in Ba, one of the first things that people know about Ba town is that your allegiance lies to the Ba soccer team. And some would say it goes, it comes before the rugby team. I migrated here when I was 14. My parents, um, chose to come here. I didn't have much of a say in that decision. However, I'm grateful for the choices they made. Coming to this country opened up many great opportunities for me. I have a great job here. I have my wife, family, uh, a car, house, all the ingredients you need for a good life. However, there's always a part of me that's in Fiji. There's something about it. You know, I, I can't just Shrug that off. It is who I am. A couple of months ago, my wife and I we decided to take our um, daughter to Fiji. We wanted her to know her roots, start understanding her culture. So we went for three weeks. My wife packed for three months. And um, it was quite funny. Even at the um, check-in counter, the auntie from Fiji Airways looked at our pile of bags and went, Bosso, are you migrating back? Anyway, after a bit of karakere, we decided uh, we got our bags through, um, and then about four hours and six bags later, we arrived in Fiji. I, um, I was worried about how Samara would cope with the heat, but as it turned out, I was sweating more than her. We jumped into a car, and we decided to go, or we headed down towards Bar. I morphed into one of those crazy drivers, zigzagging out, trying to play hide and seek with the cane trucks as I overtook them. And then eventually we arrived to Bar. And I drove up to my house. And this is what we saw. So as you can see, overgrown grass, trees and shrubs in a place where I used to roam around when I was a young kid. I was first a little bit shocked. The place seemed a little bit unfamiliar. However, after a while, got my bearings, started walking around. Samara was with me. And the memory started to flow back. I know this land like the back of my hand. I know every tree, every structure, even down to where the PowerPoints are in that house. I clearly remember them. My, great, my grandfather brought, bought this house, this land, and he built this house. My father's renovated this house. Generations of my family have lived in this house. Their tears, blood, um, and sweat have been shed on this land. And I felt proud. I was walking around showing my little girl what things meant. She was mostly confused, but that didn't matter. Um, I could relate to how Samara would have felt. Samara was visiting her great-grandfather's village for the very first time. 
And I had a similar experience, actually, about a year ago, when I did the same thing. I traveled all the way to India to visit my great-grandfather's village. My great-grandfather was a Girmitya. He came to Fiji in 1903, at the age of 19. He came all alone, left his family behind, and he never saw them again. He probably had the same attachment I, to India that I have for Fiji. And for me, this was very special, going back to his village 115 years after he had left, almost completing that journey that he had. The villagers, as I walked around the village in India, they kept telling me, Beta, ye aapi ka gaon hai, or son, this is your village. And I knew you know, this place was special, but I couldn't relate to it, beyond the fact that this was just my great-grandfather's village. The connections, the stories, the people, they were not there. The place was not familiar to me. Nevertheless, it was still very special. As I returned back from India, I realized that it was my duty to ensure that the stories that we have in our families are passed on to the next generation. It is incredibly important that we do this so that our future generations know where they come from. Because if you don't know where you're coming from, then you don't know where you're going to go. And it is for that reason my wife and I decided to take Samara to Fiji. I didn't want her just to learn about the stories. I wanted her to feel her history, live her history, see it from the way I saw it. Not going to fancy hotels in Fiji. You can do that, but I also wanted her to live with the locals, with her family. And it's amazing what a trip to Fiji does. Within a few days, she's walking around shouting, Pula, Vinaka, to anyone that she could see, bringing a smile to everyone's face. And then within a week, she's running around chasing bare feet, chasing chickens on the farm. And then she started to speak in Hindi to her dada and dadis in Fiji. And anyone who lives here bringing up a, a kid knows how difficult it is to get them to speak anything but English. So I felt really proud because language is one of the key ways you interact with your culture. As we um, returned back from Fiji um, with heavy hearts, and I had a healthy dose of Kani Kani by then, um, those who may have read my, uh, my bio on the, um, on the website would have seen that I'm on a quest to beat my father's kava drinking record, and I got nowhere near that uh, during this trip. Anyways, um, as we returned back, I, um, I reflected on my migration from Australia, uh, from Fiji to Australia, is very similar to the Girmitia migrations. They left behind their families, migrated to Fiji, and we've done the same. And anyone that leaves the shores of Fiji leaves a piece of them behind. They yearn to go back. They leave that happiness behind. I've never seen, actually, anyone leave Fiji um, without you know, some, some tinge of sadness. So, as we, as, as we, um, sorry, as we return back to Sydney, I wanted to ensure that I passed on all the stories to Samara. And that spurred on for me to write my book. Now, home isn't just a place for me. It's beyond that. It's, it's a spiritual connection. And you either have it or you don't. It's very hard to explain this, this feeling, this connection you have to Fiji. There is a, um, we, we all migrate overseas and then we start to look for that happiness. Some of us are searching for the same happiness that we found in Fiji. We get busy in our day-to-day -day lives. We start chasing the dollar. Sometimes we spend money that we don't even have th on things we don't even like, trying to impress people we don't even enjoy or like uh, enjoy their company with. We're always searching for that happiness. 
And it's important in that context to make sure that you know where you've come from. And this picture here in many ways symbolizes what would happen if you do not reconnect with your roots. Eventually, that the grass, the trees, the shrubs, they start to grow. And the place that was so familiar to you will become unfamiliar. There is a beautiful um, line from a tourism Fiji campaign that I recently, um, recently saw. In fact, my daughter was singing the same tune this morning. And it goes something like, Aokela na vanua e bulatiko kina namarau. I always find happiness whenever I go to Fiji. It's a place that completes me. I feel very carefree. My village is where I'm most relaxed. I know every corner of the place, and I can spend as much time over there as I want. I never get bored. Now, there is, a, there is another place that I, uh, I visit whenever I go to Fiji, and that's this place here. So this is Varavu Cemetery. It's on the outskirts of Taletake Koro, just outside Ba. Ignore that dude in the picture, it's not a ghost, just my cousin. He's just paying his respects to our grandfather. Now, my father used to bring me here ever since I was young. He wanted me to make sure where my grandfather was, where his final place was. And whenever we came here, it wasn't just to pay our respects. He always told me a story about my, great -grand or my grandfather. And I never met my grandfather. He died before I was even born. But through these stories, I've come to realize the man he was, the sacrifices he made. And I, I am forever grateful to my father for doing that. However, through my research, I've come to realize there's a lot more to this, to this place than I first realized. There are over 20 family members that are buried here from my family. This place for me is one of the most sacred places in the world. This is where my family members, their final home is. And this is the closest I can ever be to them in this world. And I've also come to realize there is one very special person who's also buried here. A 19 year old man who migrated from India journeyed for three months on a sail ship, and in the process became an indentured slave. He eventually freed himself and unshackled the bonds of the caste system that he was attached to in India, allowing his future generations to grow and prosper. And I am his great-grandson here today, standing in front of you, telling his story. He was my Girmitya Pardada, Faiz Muhammad Khan. And maybe, just maybe, that rainbow at the back was him saying, welcome home, son. Lovinaka. Thank you very much.